Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through and reviewing Fedora 31 Workstation. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment, and then I'll go ahead and give it some ratings. My first impressions are that it has the look and feel of Debian or Ubuntu, and that's because it deploys the default desktop environment as the GNOME desktop environment. The desktop is very minimal, as you can see, very non-cluttered, nothing on here. It really doesn't resemble any other operating systems like Windows or Mac OS. It's got a dock on the side here if you go to activities and a very bright tone in color for the background, which is definitely different from their take on the prior version where it was much darker. Not a whole lot has seemed to change from the prior release, but I do know that they're servicing a new version of GNOME, as well as upgraded quite a few packages for this version. Let's go ahead and look through some of the Fedora 31 components here and get a feel for what's included in the operating system. Also, if you are new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. So as I'm looking through, if you hit the activities on the top left, you'll see the default programs that come with Fedora 31 here, which is their default browser, Firefox, then Rhythmbox for playing music and files as their file manager, and then software for their applications manager. If you hit the dotted array here, you can see the rest of the applications that come with the Fedora 31 workstation install and a couple other items. You have uh, contacts, a document scanner. Uh, the LibreOffice Suite is what comes standard for your Office Suite. So you can go ahead and get into editing your documents right off the bat. Don't have to install anything else. You also get a few other things such as maps, photos, videos, all the necessary stuff for an everyday user to use on their operating system. One item I don't see on here is access to their terminal. It must be in utilities, I would assume. And here it is, a terminal, which is a little interesting that they don't just supply that as one of the main programs. Well, what I'd like to do is go ahead and go inside terminal and kind of check out how this looks, if anything's really changed. And it looks very similar to what it did before. Uh, a great option here is the tab option, so you can go ahead and add as many tabs as you would like. And one thing I do like about this distribution is it, de it deploys a terminal that has text that's very easy to see. And everything's very easy on the eyes. It uses dark colors for the backgrounds and light colors for the text. That way you can see the text very easily. And as we issue commands, you can see that they're white as well. And then you have a blue folders or directories and if we log in as a super user, let's go ahead and put our password in, the text all stays white, so it doesn't highlight that you're the root user at this point, it just assumes you know. It does tell you what location, what folder or directory you're currently in. Some other things with this terminal, if we go ahead and make it a little bigger here, is that you have another drop down here, so you can go ahead and select through whatever tab that you want. Let's say if we have a bunch of tabs and you can't read all the names of the tabs, you can go in here and get this list view of them to easily select between them. Another nice feature is that you can use the Alt key in order to switch between the different tabs that you have open, such as Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3, and Alt 4. If you right click on the top of the terminal, you can do things such as maximize, minimize, move, all the typical things that you would find, as well as you can search for items by hitting the magnifying glass and some other options like increasing the size of the terminal in this drop down here and also setting other things up with preferences. If you don't like the look and feel of this terminal, you can go ahead and switch that up. Really big bonus is of course the tabs. Not all distributions come with a tab terminal, so I really do enjoy the fact that they have that. And uh, one other thing that I would like to try is going to create a file in the background here of the desktop. I don't think we'll be able to, but it's always nice to try. So I'll go ahead and type in vi and put a file on the desktop. I'll just call it file name and just put something in here. Savvy Nick, escape out of here. 
and as you can tell that there is nothing in the background right now. So it doesn't allow you to put files on the desktop, we'll exit out of terminal. Go ahead and confirm that. As you can see, no file name on here of the file that we just created. The way we'll be able to find that is to go into the file browser. So again, activities, and let's look through the file browser here. We saved it to the desktop, so here you go. You can see that the file name does exist here. And just to show you, I'm gonna try dragging this out. You still can't put that file on the back here, background here for desktop. So the default here doesn't allow you to put files in the desktop. I don't necessarily like that because I do like being able to put my files on the desktop. Uh, let's explore the file manager here a little bit more. So you can hit a drop down and create new folders and open a terminal in this current location by selecting the drop down here. Up top, it tells you what current location you're located in. So the home of Savvy Nick and then the desktop underneath Savvy Nick, the user that we're currently using. And on the left hand side, you just have a few options here, such as your pictures, documents, downloads, so on and so forth. If we go back, you can see that the icons are fairly large here, very easy to see, and the text is very simple to read. Nothing special there. You can also increase the icon size up to 133%, which is quite large in this distribution. We'll go back to the default by just hitting back at 100% here. You also have a few options here in the file manager. You can sort A to Z and a couple other methods here, such as size of the files as well as reloading the current directory. Then some other options we have is to create more tabs, which is always nice, as well as showing hidden files and changing up preferences for the file manager. Other locations allows you to add network locations if you want. I think we've taken a enough look here at the file manager of Fedora 31. So let's go ahead, exit out here. Now Fedora, is an independent Linux distribution that Red Hat owns and Red Hat is very known in the server space for its stability. And Fedora also of course offers a server edition which you can check out, it's great to use. And one of the key features of Fedora is the stability as well as it's known as a very good operating system for people migrating over with older hardware. And of course, it's also on the cutting edge of features. Now the desktop might seem unfamiliar to people migrating from Windows or Mac, but it's very simple to use because it's very uncluttered and there's not an overwhelming amount of stuff here on the background or even options to use. So back to the desktop here, in the middle you have the time and date information and then on the far right hand side, you also have the ability to change a couple things around and view things such as your volume and the currently connected network connection. So I have a wired connection here. You can also have a wireless connection, of course. Shows that uh, the laptop's currently fully charged and what users logged in, Savvy Nick. A few other things at the bottom, the settings as well as logging out of the screen or locking it out. And then, of course, if you want to shut down the computer as well as restart it, you can select the power option here on the far right. Go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you're in this far. It really does help me out. One other thing I'd like to show you is right-clicking on the background. It gives us just a few options here. You can change the background, so why not change it? Let's check out what they have available. As you can see, they have quite a bit available here some nature scenes. I think this one's a pretty cool one, so I'm going to set this as my background and lock screen. Let's see that change real quick. And it does look pretty good here. Let me just exit out so we can see it. Kind of cool, like you're on the road and there's some mountains around you. Some desert scape maybe. And uh, if we hit uh, change background again, we can look through all of our other options on the left. So some other options, it kind of leads you to uh, categories in the settings here, as you can tell. And you can search the settings in the far left. A couple other options down here, such as power and networking, very important to use. You might want to make sure to get into power. One important option here is like the automatic suspend when on your battery power, so after some amount of time, it will suspend the computer. Some people have uh, a problem with this in distributions where they won't be able to power their 
computer back on if it's suspended. It's a known issue, but uh, other options here, uh, just uh, a blank screen after how many minutes for power saving. And then if we go back to the background here, I just want to check one thing. And you can't really have revolving backgrounds, which is fine by me. I don't necessarily care for that. But some people do like that where they get a change in the background as, as ta time passes by. So let's look at the few other options that we had. We can also go to the display settings. So this is different from the background settings, of course. Here is where you can set up the resolution of your screen and turn on or off the night light if you'd like to do so. A few other things on the left which are different from settings as you saw on the other one. This is called devices, so you have such things as printers and uh, color here, removable media, and your mouse and touchpad settings. We'll exit out and then right click one more time and then you have the settings of course. So you kind of have that redundancy but uh, settings just takes you back to your devices here, it seems like. Let me just try one thing. I'll exit out. I'll go to the display settings. Actually, let me go to the change background. Let's see this pop up. And it says settings on the left. Yep. And then if I go back to settings, what does it do? There you go. It just defaults back to the last thing that you were really looking at. So since I was looking at settings and I hit settings, it defaulted to settings. If I would have been in devices and then went to settings, it would have defaulted to devices. So that's just kind of something to know. I think it's a little redundant. I think you'll pick the one that you want to visit. So it should just be uh, the two options instead of kind of this ever changing option here. So that's really it when it comes to the Fedora 31 workstation experience here. There's not much to the desktop. It's very simple and uncluttered, great to use. So at this point, I'll give it some ratings. Fedora Linux is a very popular Linux distribution and has been in the game for quite a while. And because of this, I have to give it a popularity rating of eight out of 10. It's simple to use, and since there's not a lot of clutter, it seems to focus on keeping the learning curve to a minimal. You can also install different desktop environments if you choose to do so, and it doesn't deploy some of the more friendly environments that people use from Windows or Mac. So I'll give it a user friendliness rating of seven out of 10. Since it's very stable and doesn't focus too heavily on raw performance gains, but is on the cutting edge of releases, as well as the server version is there if you really need some performance. I'll give it a performance rating of seven out of 10. This distribution is owned and based off of Red Hat. The community is always on the cutting edge, so I'll give it a features rating of eight out of 10. And finally, it seems to have a nice and decent sized community supporting it. Finally, it seems to have a nice and decent sized community supporting it. And since again, it's one of the larger known distributions because it's made a name for itself over the years, it gets a sustainability rating of eight out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 38 out of 50. I hope you enjoyed this review and walkthrough of Fedora 31 Workstation. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.